All right, Skylar, lesson learned. What do you got? Um, it's just being more aggressive when I need to chase after a quarterback because the the pricing for quarterbacks is just very hard to understand. And especially in a lot of cases when you don't have a quarterback to offer an exchange in part of a deal, it's having the guts to step up and spend what's either going to need to be you know, any combination, depending on the level of quarterback you're going for, a stud player, a flex player, and some draft capital. You know, and a lot of times when I'm like, I'm trying to gauge the impact of this quarterback on my team, I'm a little stingy when it comes to moving that draft capital or getting rid of a flex player that I've grown attached to when really the benefits it would have to my team come playoff time when it was much harder to acquire these quarterbacks you know, it would have been beneficial. I'm talking guys like your Kirk Cousins, your Derek Carr. It doesn't feel good to spend, let's say, a late first plus a player for these for these types of guys. But, you know, it was that that apprehension that landed me sticking a playoff run with Matt Ryan as my quarterback too in a league when if I had Kirk Cousins or Derek Carr for that playoff run, you know, things might have ended a little differently. So it's mm-hmm. just when I identify that need – really just swallowing it and spending up because it's not like those players are losing a ton of value moving forward. I think Cousins and Carr kind of have had the same value over the last season or two, and I think they'll have the same value for another season or two. So it's just making that move. Or if you did want to even spend up and go for someone better, if you don't have necessarily the quarterbacks in your team, you know, if if somebody's willing to move a guy like a Herbert or a Burrow, you know, Burrow before this explosion still was a little slow at certain points of the year. If you just swallowed it and moved a guy, you know, like A.J. Brown and a pick or, or a, you know, Debo and a flex player to make that move for Joe Burrow, I'd be stoked with it now. Even though in the time, in the moment when I was like, I don't want to let go of A.J. Brown or Debo, look what he's doing. It was just it was a harder thing to swallow in the, in the moment where now I had wish I had made that move. Mm-hmm. I think like the conversion rate for QBs to other positions is just always something that's really tough because of the variance in people's values in different skill players to, to try and put that in perspective. That's why I think it's so much easier to make those trades when you have a QB in the, in the deal, because it's easy to just go, okay, here's the difference between those two players. Yeah. Because well, you, they're the same you don't position. always have that luxury, right? I mean, at right. the end of the it's day, tough. there's only 32 starters. And if you have a 12 team league, you can do the math. Not every team has that yeah. third quarterback. That's a starter, right? Yeah. So to try to push the deal over and make you one of those teams who has that, that, that depth, you, you really do have to pay up. And, and a lot of times you do have to wow them with the offer. So like, why am I moving a quarterback, which is, you know, one of the hardest positions to fill the need for unless you kind of wow them. And, and those players like Adebo who kind of jump off the page are a part of the deal. Um, yeah, but to, to, to your point, I think it is worth it to be aggressive for things like that. I know personally for me, there's something to be said for being just comfortable with the, your two quarterbacks in your super flex league where you can just be like, I don't have to worry about that. I've got burrow and car and I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm fine. Yeah, it's, it's why they're, they're never cheaper than they are in the startup. I know you hear that every time you go into draft, like a hey, quarterback's never cheaper than it is in the startup. It's, it's true. Like mm-hmm. these types of players, it's the same reason I'm willing to take the risk and go out and acquire uh, Deshaun Watson at market. Even if he misses half or all of next year, it's like, just how scarce the market is and the difference he can make to your team. Um, I think you need to call your shots and just be, be more aggressive when you identify it as a need or in your startups, um, you know, come out with other needs that need to be filled. If you, if you can walk out of your draft with the first, even the first two rounds of these, you know, younger quarterbacks or dependable quarterbacks, that's fine. Or taking the confidence if they're sitting there in rounds six through eight, if for some reason Kirk Carr, or Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr are there in those <laughs> the same. yeah in those rounds <laughs> like just swallow it it's not sexy but like it fills a need on your team way more than you could imagine like no one feels good taking Derek Carr or in the sixth seventh eighth round of your startup draft but in season you will be happy you yeah. did because yeah, you, you're absolutely. not you're not fumbling around for that second or third quarterback to improve your team you have you have your guy you don't really have to think about it and the other positions. They're, they're easier to come by, you know, and like dra- drafting quarterbacks is tough. You need high, high draft capital and you need them to hit. Like not only would you have needed a top, you know, four or five pick this year to land, you know, Fields or Zach Wilson, but they then have to hit and we still don't even know that yet. Right. So just 
getting guys that you know have already shown us something and have that security, I think is underrated. It's just an underrated thing coming out of your startup. It's an underrated thing in season. Everybody loves the, nu- the next up and coming guy, but, um, you know, taking that value where you can get it and just getting those quarterbacks on your team, I think is worth it, you know, or even if you had that one one you're like, Lawrence, this is where I get it. Offloading Lawrence for some extra juice plus a Derek Carr, I think would have just been a great decision. You know what you have with Derek Carr and you're, you're picking up extra value that can help you move in the future if you come into this problem. You probably could have gotten Derek Carr plus a lot you right after draft. Yeah. You probably still can, to be honest. Yeah. You might. Yeah. You might. And I would right now. I mean, if you give me a flexible player, Derek Carr, 22 first for Trevor Lawrence, like I'm going to take that every day of the week. And there's there might be a guy in your league who will pay that right now. So. Yeah. yeah, I do think that you really want to nail down one of the top quarterbacks. Um, it's obviously much easier to do in the startup. You can work your way into the wherever it is in the first round that you figure that these guys are going to go. Um, actually this year, probably anywhere in the first round, you can be reasonably confident that, you know, JT is going to go in the first round. Probably somebody likes uh, DeAndre Chase, Swift or Chase something. Pitts. Swift is Chase creeping and in Pitts there. Are going and then in there. I've seen Javante and Najee creeping into the first round. So really yeah. quarterbacks are getting pushed back because of all the hype on some of these young guys. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there's like eight or nine quarterbacks that I'd be pretty, pretty happy with as my QB one, but then you lock that in, right? You have your QB one, um, you know, that these guys are going to produce and you've got that. And then you can kind of go to work on your QB two. And yes, you can get into these mid season problems where you have Matt Ryan and nobody else, and you got to figure out what you're going to do, but at least you have that top of the lineup set and then if you got to swallow it and you got to send a pretty good um, a pretty good receiver or something like that, then you can at least make that move at that point. And yeah, it, it definitely is totally worth it to pay through the nose and to solidify that position because you've got to trust yourself to be able to um, kind of beat the, beat the rest of the league, I think, in running backs and wide receivers. You have to be confident in yourself to be able to do that. And then once you have that quarterback set, because let's face it, nobody's good at evaluating these quarterbacks. The NFL isn't good at evaluating these quarterbacks. <laughs> uh, if you think you can do that, I think you're kidding yourself. And so I'm comfortable, you know, waiting kind of to see if a quarterback is going to be a hit and then paying the price um, to acquire them. So like Joe Burrow after his rookie season, I was, I was sold. I, I was like, okay, this guy can play. I would move. I would pay the price, you know, the two firsts or whatever it is for Joe Burrow at that point and solidify that spot in my lineup. And then I'll go to work on the rest of my roster once I have that spot solidified. 100%. I mean, if you're coming out of the, the back end of your startup draft, we, we've seen startups recently where I saw somebody pull it. It was like Burrow and Dak at the back end of the first. Uh, like you come, out of awesome. your, you come out of your startup if you're stoked. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're early in the first and you take Herbert and the back end of the second, you take like Trey Lance, I'm I'm happy with that too. Like, I'm yep. out of the way. Later in the draft, if maybe if you took Lance, if you want to take a, a Matt Ryan in the tenth round, sure. But like, just to lock in some guys that I have relative confidence in, or I not relative, like absolute confidence in, is is really important. It's it's underrated. It's underrated. It's flashy to come out of your draft with, you know, Jonathan Taylor and Javante Williams as your first two picks. But I think you're gonna have a really upwards battle. The, the rest of your thing and let's be real these running backs whose shelf life is only you know four four years if you don't have those quarterbacks your team isn't that good i know if you don't have you, you can be good without the running backs like you come yeah. out you have two stud uh quarterbacks you build through wide receiver and then in season you add some of these veteran backs who are cheap like your guys like james connor or leonard fournette this year you're going to be just fine you don't have to always get the flashy uh, young stud running back. You can leave that for redraft. Yep. Completely agree. 